Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. We wanted to pause a moment for the entourage to come in. And for those who are sensitive here to feel it. It is so difficult to give information that is beyond what you expect. And even after it is given, it's unknown whether it sticks. Some information is advanced. This is the last channeling of the year. The last two times I have sat in front of you, I've given you summaries. This really isn't a summary at all. It's the next step. I'm going to call it the completion of the story of the soul. It really begins to explain something that is unexplainable. But we have to tie it together. And I wanted to do it this year. The next three years we have described to you as the years of completion. Three years, a catalytic number in numerological terms to describe a nine. Two, three, four represents the second, third, and fourth year of this new energy. 2015, 2016, 2017, added together all of those numbers, create a nine as well. Something will be completed in those next three years that is esoteric, and I'm going to start the process tonight by letting you in on a little bit of information a little more advanced than I have before. Dear ones, this is difficult. The difficulty is mostly with my partner. He's a translator. As many years as he has been doing this, if I give him information that is beyond his comprehension, he is not able to translate it. His comprehension is much like yours. And so we fall back on metaphors. We fall back on the things that we know are within the comprehension of him. And the rest the entourage paints for you in the room. The third language must play a big part of this. The third language represents an intuitive language that is literally being broadcast with my voice to anyone who wishes to listen. Loving, informative, benevolent information that goes beyond the spoken word, available to listeners as long as there are listeners. I want to start with an example of what we're trying to do. I want to tell you about the soul. I want to tell you in terms that I've never used before and I can't. You don't have the words. You don't have the experience. You don't have the energy and no concept of where you're going. Not really. And it's so beautiful. Let us say for a moment, pretend with me, just pretend that a ship lands from another planet. It's friendly and out steps a humanoid couple and they give you their names and where they're from and they speak your language. 
And as you look at them, you know very well they do not have the seed of God that you have in you. It's not part of their scenario, but they have intelligence. And they're interested in humans. Let us say and pretend for a moment they are safe. They are on an exploration mission, and you are the only human that is able to talk to them. Pretend. They're going to get everything they know about humanity from you. What is it that they would ask you? Let me, let's pretend. They're not going to ask you about history. They're not going to ask you about anything. They're going to ask you about things they don't have. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, as long as we've been looking at you and watching humanity, there is one thing we have not understood. Please tell us about love. <laughs> where do you begin and what kind of love are you going to tell them about the love you have for the planet for your partner for the animals in your life for your ancestors for your mother for your father for those who you've lost and how would you begin how many kinds of love are there? What are the differences? <clears throat> and when you started, and even if they said we have plenty of time, <laughs> where would you begin? And when you did begin, how would you describe the emotional field of love? You could say whatever you wanted to say, and they could understand the language, but you and I know that love is more than language. When you fall in love, there is a thickness of spirit. There is something palatable. You look into the eyes of your newborn. That's not just emotion. There's communication. Love has a field around it that's beautiful. It vibrates. Two humans together in love. They form a bond. There's actually a third energy formed because of the two they have for one another. They think about each other from long distances. It's more than language. How are you going to describe that? Let us pretend they sit there and they listen to you. As long as you want to talk, they're taking notes. <laughs> When it's time to go, they thank you, shake your hand, and they mean it. Their research is done, and they fly away. You can just imagine what they're saying to each other. <laughs> they're not any closer to knowing about love than they were before. Because everything you've said is not discernible, because they don't have it. This is the puzzle tonight. And all we have is what you can absorb. So we go to the third language and we want you to see what we're talking about. We want you to understand as much as you can. Let us review what we have said about the human soul. The soul is not part of that which is corporeal. And yet it resides in you at a corporeal level. But it's not. It's not chemistry. It's not synapse. It's not intuition. It's not any of the things you've studied. It is something you can't understand. It's a piece of the creator. The creative source which created all that is. Long ago. Created a beautiful benevolent system and it needed a universe to accomplish it and galaxies and planets and life. And all of those were put together and accomplished correctly, properly, and not accidentally. The creative source that built the planets around you, the galaxy that you circle, is inside you. And it hides. 
It hides because it's part of the test on the planet for you to discover with free choice if it's there. To make it hide even more, there's only a certain percentage of it you can handle so you're not aware of it. You're not aware of its grandness or what it is actually, but you are aware of it intuitively. Humanity knows God. As far back as you can look at your history, human, you came onto the planet and you looked for the Creator. Because it's inside. And then it happened. The Pleiadians came. I'll tell you about them in a way I've never, ever told you. The human soul permeates everything about you. It is not locatable. It is pure multidimensional energy that is sacred and beyond anything you can ever, ever measure. It's not in a scale that you have ever seen. You don't have a word for it. You don't have colors for it. It's too far above any sense that any human will ever have to identify. And it loves you because you're family. Closest thing is love. And that's what you feel. You can't explain that. You can't explain your soul. You can't explain the creator. But you know it's there. It has no gender. It's generic and beautiful. And filled with splendor. And it's inside everyone. Dear one, it's inside me. I am not a human. It's inside me. I speak to you from a position of honor and gratitude. I've never been a human. I can't believe what you go through. Astonishing to me that you would have signed up for this. And the soul is right there. Is the soul part of your DNA? Yes, of course. I've identified the layers it resides in. But that's not all. It's in every chemical in your body. It resides in the energy of your consciousness in ways you don't know. It's accessible in ways you don't know. And it loves you beyond measure. I cannot tell you what it is. Because you don't have the concepts to understand it. But if you could think for a moment. Of the most beautiful colors you've ever seen. That would be it. The most benevolent force you've ever felt. That would be it. The most love you've ever had. For anyone or from anyone. That would be it. It surpasses anything you've ever experienced on the planet. That'd be it. And the Pleiadians gave it to you. A long time ago. I want to tell you about them. After I tell you about you. Dear ones, this is difficult, and this is a review of one thing we've discussed, and we're going to go further than this. The things I give you today will sound outlandish, beyond weird and strange to many. We're prepared for that. But many of you have to know it. I'm talking to old souls, both listeners and in person. 
Not all, but most. Most. I want to tell you who you are. If I haven't given you this information before in this way, you need to hear it now. When humanity was ready to be seated by the Pleiadians, you simply were part of the animals on the planet. Designed to be at the evolutionary stage you were. You were way beyond that of cavemen. You were ready. You look like you do now. You act like you do now. And you were ready. And it wasn't that long ago. You want to paint the picture of 200,000 years? And 100,000 of them were just getting it so you only had one kind of human instead of 14 or 15, like all the other animals. Now, here's the question. When it was time to build Lemuria, and the seeding took place as it did, who do you think was here to receive the seeds? Just regular humans that have come up through the evolutionary process? Just another animal? And the answer is no. It was you. And you came from the Pleiades. I want to tell you something. When it comes to reincarnation, it's not limited to this planet. You were aware of that, were you not? You have to come from somewhere. When you have an exponential growth of humanity, where do you think the pool comes from? Other places. Life does not then emerge from nowhere. What if I told you there's a set amount of entities and soul groups that incarnate? And it's been happening for millions of years. Other places long before 200,000 years ago. You came from the Pleiadians. You agreed to drop that which you had evolved to, come back into a form that was basic, and receive the seeds because you had to be of a certain kind of chemical readiness soul remembrance, all the things you've never heard had to be correct for the seeds to take. For the meld of the DNA, the chromosomes to move around for you to become who you are. This is the creation story. So let's put it in simple terms. Adam and Eve were special. <laughs> they were you. Having come fresh from another place, ready to receive the knowledge of light and dark. It wasn't random. That's who you were. You're not just old souls. You're very special old souls. You've come from the Pleiades. It's a system you wouldn't believe. You came from everything to almost nothing, and you did it because you saw the potential of today. How many lifetimes have you lived the last couple hundred thousand years? Huh? What have you been through to get to today? Well, I want to tell you where it's going and the potential of where it can go. And I want to paint some time frames for you, and I don't want to scare you. with how long it's going to be. <laughs> but I want to show you the potentials of what you can be. And this is where it gets odd. When I say Pleiadian, who do you think about? What do you picture? Humanoid forms that are perhaps taller and very wise. That will come here, not necessarily in vehicles, but they come here, that would come here instantly. What might that tell you about what they've got you don't? 
So now I want to paint a picture. The Pleiadians, the seven sisters, made up of nine sons. Three habitable planets, all habitable by Pleiadians, eventually, have been a society of enlightened humanoids for two million years. You got 200,000. A hundred of it really counts toward Lemuria. 50,000 really is where it began. Really. Almost all the rest of it was just getting ready. And I just told you that the Pleiadians have been at it for two million years. You're looking at a society that is eight times longer than you. Eight times. They went through what you did almost to the T. They grew up and matured just the way you did. They had a time frame for them too. They went into graduate status like you are now and everything changed for them. Two million years. A portion of that, about 10,000, were spent killing each other. Sound familiar? Killing each other. They were the playground of maturity, casting stones, calling names without any maturity in the dark. The same issues you had, they had. They passed the marker. And they begin to receive information. And I'll get there. Believe me. Tonight. I'll tell you. But I want, you to, I want to tell you about them. Their DNA is like yours. You probably knew that. You're going to find it all over the galaxy. DNA is DNA. <laughs> and the principles which created it here have created it everywhere. It is the building block of life. Period. And you're going to see it someday when you find life in other places in this solar system. It's going to have DNA. You're going to start understanding. It's natural occurring life process everywhere. Two million years. Their DNA started to become more viable like yours 44 54 55 66 77 88 let me tell you what happens at 88 <laughs> you start to meld with the soul you're designed to be divine did you know that I want to tell you something. You're designed to live forever. Renewable. Every cell keeps going and going, especially the divine in you. When it starts balancing up the cellular structures, it creates new ones. It goes to the blueprint. It never gets old. You never get old. Crying, what are you going to do with overpopulation when you never get old? <laughs> Let me give you a hint. The Pleiadians have three planets. Does that give you something? You learn to move around. You learn about the universe. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. It's beautiful. A Pleiadian is the closest thing you'll ever see to an angel in your life. They're working at 88%. They have control over physics. They're entangled with anything they want to be. The human soul is divine physics at its maximum. Control over everything. The creator is in the soul. The creator is that, is the master physicist of the universe. If you are at 88% of that, you've got control over everything. That's the seed that you have inside. 
What is their society like, you might ask? There is no society. <laughs> They're way past that. <laughs> there is only the togetherness of love. The closest thing to an angel you'll ever see. 88% of the creative source over two million years. The Pleiadians were seeded by others. We've talked about Orion and Octorius. They become your grandparents. There's one before those you've never even heard of. They took a million years or more. You do understand, do you not, in a planet that's over four billion years old, you're the new kid on the block here. You're really new. Imagine what was going on in your galaxy. Do you know how long a billion years is? <laughs> Imagine what went on. This is the only planet of free choice in the galaxy at this moment. Dear ones, you're it. And you just passed a marker and all of the life in this galaxy that has divine DNA knows about you. The signal was sent. I want to tell you what that does. That brings celebration, hope, visitors, <laughs> and help. The system begins. All of this talk about soul, and here's why. I want to tell you about the system. My partner has spent a day talking to you about evolution spiritual evolution within the cellular structure of your body creates a symbiotic relationship with your dna your akash intuition all of these things and he never really talked about the soul because we haven't given him this yet the system of spiritual evolution comes through the soul period doesn't come through the pineal. The pineal senses the higher self. Intuition senses the higher self, but the soul is the one who delivers the information. The soul is connected to the grids. Your human soul is the catalyst and always was for the graduation energy that you are now ready to receive it does not come in through the human portion it cannot the time capsules that are opening that the Pleiadians have armed if I may use the word armed literally ready to go off in your direction to give you information is going to go to the soul part of you. And the soul part of you is only engageable as you approach 44. Spiritual evolution is going to be an increase in soul awareness. Now here's something we've never talked about that you are starting to feel. We're going to call it this. We're going to call it soul remembrance. Your Akash is only from earth. Let me tell you something about that. We have gave you information a long time ago what happens to your Akashic remembrance when you pass over the veil. It stays here. It's in the cave of creation in a crystalline substance, you might say, that remembers everything. It's like you have your own crystal and it stays on the planet. And when, you, when your soul comes back, it picks up the information, puts it in your DNA, and off you go. It stays here. So let me ask you, why are some of you remembering who you were on another planet? I know who's here, you see? <laughs> Some of you are remembering Pleiadians. Some of you are remembering that you went through this before. It's giving you hope because you know where it went. You got to see 88%. 
And that's why you're here, because the chance of that happening here, you're not going to miss it. Who knows how long it's going to take? It doesn't matter, because you're going to be here the whole time. Eighty-eight percent. Soul remembrance is what we're going to call soul akash. It remembers past earth. And this is starting to happen. With the evolutionary process of that which is taking place on this planet with old souls, in is going to come soul remembrance. You're going to remember your eternal. Who were you? Five million years ago, you were not Pleiadian. <laughs> that is going to occur to you as well. You want to know, you want to really know where your souls are coming from? All the planets of free choice that have graduated. They're not coming from the sky in some well from the creative source. They're coming from other places who have gone through this, dear ones. That's who you are. But the ones in the room and the ones listening, you wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be listening unless you had a certain attribute of soul remembrance that is already at work. Not what you've done on the planet, but what you did in the Pleiadians. In the Seven Sisters, you went through this. You graduated and you spent a long time going that direction closer and closer to the divine source. It's so attractive, dear ones, to come to a place where you're one with God. You've been there. You've done that. And you were the first on the planet to receive the seed. And now you awaken and you remember a little of what it was like, just a little. You struggle with the conflicts of being a human and also knowing where you can go and what you can do. Frustration. Sometimes chemical imbalance. In the last two years, many have died. Maybe they've been friends of yours. You weren't ready for it. Maybe they've been partners. I want to tell you something. If you haven't heard it before, they're back. <laughs> they can't stay away that long. They had to leave then in order to pave the way for your return, dear one, because of what happened in 2012. Scheduled to leave early to pave the way for you coming back. There is a system here which is beyond benevolence. There is a system here which reeks with the greatest love of the creative source you can imagine. Dripping with it. Waiting for you to become one with God. The room is filled with pictures of holy men and women. Many of them on other continents who have found the connection that brings them to a wholeness where they can keep themselves alive for a long time, be one with the planet, meld in consciousness with nature and all that is. In an older energy, this was always possible, but it took discipline and it changed their lives forever. Some of them could not eat the things they used to eat. Many of them became celibate. All of these things in order to create this precious energy that for a moment would give them the solace of feeling the creator. And I want to tell you, dear ones, they were the forerunners for what's coming. This is your future. With free choice, you can turn it around if you wish, but you're not going to. <laughs> you can go slow if you wish, but you're not going to. And I know this because of what has happened in the past. You see, peace is addictive. Love 
is addictive. Benevolence of spirit and compassion is addictive. You know how I know. Let's talk about the master that the season is about today. Perhaps you saw pictures of the Christ and you saw the animals gathered at his feet. That was accurate. <laughs> the animals saw the 88 to 90 percent in him and they were attracted to it. It's addictive you see. People gathered from all over just to sit at his feet and watch him glow because it was addictive. The entourage he had around himself was palatable and you could feel it in the arms of God and you sat in front of him and all was well with you for those moments. And if you spent a little too long, he might feed you while you were there. And all of that was real. It's a celebration, is it not, for an addictive energy of love, of compassion. And that is where you're going. But beyond that, as you increase the percentage of efficiency of your DNA, your soul brings in more of the creative energy from the source. That's the evolvement of a human spirit way beyond biology, way beyond consciousness. You handshake with the source that created the universe. I complete this story of the soul. That's where it's headed. That's why we teach it. Now you know. You might want to review the words. How long will it take? Too long. <laughs> this is just the beginning. You're in year two, dear ones. In year two. <laughs> and there's such a celebration that you made it you will start to see humans mature in spirit. We've said it over and over. The things that are so out of balance today in humanism will start to be balanced and mature. You'll see it everywhere. In every aspect you can think about, even politics. <laughs> balance. Compassion, wisdom, you'll start to see it. When you come in next time, you're going to remember who you are. That's my promise. You're going to pick up where you left off. You will be a wise old child beyond any children you know today, old soul. And you're not going to make the mistakes you did this time around. None of them. It comes in with you. More than a kosh soul remembrance will keep you safe. And your children will carry what you carry. That's the way it's going to work. That's what's going to propel it forward. Past peace on earth. To graduation. Into soul energy. Too esoteric for you? It's okay. I've got time. Check in with me in about a million years. And so it is.